Good evening, church family, and welcome uh, to another episode of Sunday Talks. I'm Rock Sorton, the discipleship pastor here at Woodland Heights, and I'm excited to get to uh, continue to talk through discipleship with you and how Jesus modeled that for us, and we are going to be in our uh, last week of that. So if you've missed any episodes, I would encourage you to go back and to get caught up on those and just to, as we continue to go through and see how Jesus modeled discipleship within his own ministry and how we can do our best to mirror that um, in the church today. Um, and so we've, we've covered, uh, there's four major areas of discipleship and we've covered three of those and we're going to cover the last today. I do want to review all four of them as we have every week just to continue to to make sure that that is the focus of what we are talking about. And so we really just see from Jesus' ministry in these four stages of discipleship. Um, the first one is large gatherings. So this would be when Jesus would teach the crowds, you know, whether it be from the boat or the mountain or the beach or wherever he was. He would uh, stand before large crowds and he would speak to them and teach them the things of God. Um, and for us, that would kind of be, I mean, that, that would be our Sunday morning worship services, our corporate worship, where we come together and, and we hear, you know, here being Pastor Larry, you know, preaching God's word to us and we corporately come together with the purpose of communing with God and to hear from God and, and giving us a chance to respond to God. Um, and so the large gatherings that Jesus did would be our uh, Sunday morning worship services. And so... Uh, that would lead us to our second uh, step of discipleship in Jesus' ministry was taking from the large gatherings or the corporate worship, and he made a, a group of 12. So he created this small group um, of people that he poured into and he dove deeper into ministry with. And this is where we see Jesus um, call his 12 disciples um, that he would train and he would equip for the work of ministry uh, and this step is so important because this is where we see Jesus spend intentional time um, with his small group. It was it was applicable and practical and time what we're going to spend together. And I'm going to teach you how to do ministry. So they they ate together and they prayed together and and Jesus taught them how to serve by going out into the community um, and actually showing them this is what ministry looks like. This is how we love our neighbors and he showed them what that looked like. And he went deeper into God's word with this group of 12 that he might have with the large gatherings. Um, and, and so this small group was active in each other's lives. Uh, and, and he lived out um, in the community with them and, and took these 12 into the community. They lived life together as they ministered to the community around them. And so this is the, the type of small group at Woodland. This would be for us our, our Sunday school classes. And so I hope that we can continue our to grow our Sunday school classes. Um, into groups that mirror what Jesus did with his group as we live life together and we continue to grow spiritually together inside this building and also taking it outside into the community around us. So that's the second step of the small groups. And the, the third step of Jesus' disciple um, making model um, was taking three people from his small group um, who ended up being Peter, James, and John. And he was grooming them to become the leaders in the church once Jesus ascended back to heaven. And so Jesus showed us that um, this as, as he poured into Peter, James, and John, and he taught them things that he didn't teach the others. Um, and this step plays a vital role in discipleship as this is how we continue to grow and develop the next generation of leaders. Um, and so this step here at Woodland Heights would happen in a couple of different ways. Uh, first, any ministry leader, no matter what area of ministry that you are serving in or leading in, um, this would be speaking to you Sunday school leaders, men's and women's ministry. Um, that would all fall under this. And so uh, I really want to encourage these two things um, for this area. If you're leading in an area of ministry, um, regardless of what area it is you serve in, if you are leading in that area, pray about God showing you um, someone that you can come alongside and equip to lead in that area with you. Um, and if you're serving in the church, um, but not specifically leading in an area, and hopefully that's everyone because we are all called to serve within the body of Christ, so hopefully we are all serving. Um, but if you're in that role and you are serving within a an, an, uh, ministry area in the church, 
um, I would I would ask you to consider talking to your ministry leader about hey I, I want to grow I want to become a better leader I want to become a better servant and asking them hey can you come alongside me and teach me and equip me to do the ministry that you're doing so that you can be the leader two or three years from now or six months from now or, or however long it takes um, for you to get to that point and so this is definitely a challenge for us in the discipleship model um, for us to be growing new leaders within our church and so that is the third step in Jesus' model of discipleship and this last step the one that we're going to talk about today is probably the most challenging of all of them it requires the most personal um, accountability and the most personal discipline um, and it is personal devotion where we see spending time specifically with God and so this this step of discipleship is very different than all of the other steps that we've mentioned over the last several weeks it doesn't require you pouring into someone else or someone else pouring into you this step is all about you and God uh, this is about your personal relationship with him and as we see all throughout Scripture and in our daily lives, that God is a personal and a relationship, relational God. So while learning from other people and hearing God's word from others um, is awesome, and it's God calls us to do those things, and it's great, but oftentimes the best thing that we could do is go straight to the source and spend time intentionally with God, hearing from Him and allowing His word to speak into us and to teach us. And we do that because, because He knows everything there is to know about you. He is, a, again, a relational God. He knows you by name. He knows the amount of hairs on your head. He cares for you more than anyone or anything else in this world does. And, and He is the one that we trust. He is the one that is faithful and holy. And so that it only makes sense that we spend personal time devoted to, to spending with Him and hearing from God. And so how we do that is through spending time in God's Word and it's through spending time in prayer. And so we're going to kind of talk about that today of how you can spend time with just you and God and how that helps us to grow um, as disciples of Jesus. And so as a Christian, do you ever just think that it's hard to be faithful to the command to love God and love people? Or as you serve in ministry, do you ever feel... Uh, that you just go home exhausted is leading your household um, and caring for others just wearing you down uh, I don't have to know who is watching this to answer that and know that your answer is yes to all of those questions ministry is hard life is hard the Christian walk is hard but the Christian walk by yourself is even harder you need God in your daily lives and you need God's promises and to see his faithfulness daily if you are going to persevere and take on the challenges that we face here in this world. And so how do I know this is not just, I mean, a lot of it's personal experience, but we see firsthand from Jesus. Jesus faces these same challenges in his ministry. In Jesus' flesh, he felt the same stress and exhaustion that we feel every day in our lives and, and the things that we are facing time and time again, Jesus faced those same challenges time and time again. And we see Jesus take the same approach in response every single time. And so I'm going to throw a lot of scripture at you here over the next few minutes or bits and pieces of different um, parts of the Gospels. But I think it's really important for us to learn um, the importance and the magnitude of of spending personal time with God and how Jesus modeled that probably more than we even realize. And I'm only going to touch on a few of these, but there are far more than that that we see throughout Scripture of Jesus modeling this personal time uh, with God. And so just to, in Mark chapter 1, Jesus spends the entire night healing this community. Um, and, and He is healing them of people of diseases. He is casting out demons. And he was in the trenches of ministry with the lost, helping them, revealing God to them. And he was exhausted when it was over. And so what did he do when he was done? We see in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, And rising early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And he spent personal time with God, being strengthened, 
hearing from God and growing and preparing to continue to do the ministry that God had called him to do. In Mark chapter 6, John the Baptist, who was Jesus' cousin and one of his best friends, he had just been beheaded because of his faith in Jesus. And Jesus was mourning the loss of his friend. And so he was trying to leave his disciples and go spend some time by himself. And this great crowd catches him. Um, and instead of him pushing them away, he embraces them. Um, and, and so this is where we see Jesus perform one of his greatest miracles as he feeds the 5,000. But a after a day of mourning the loss of his friend and, and, and ministering to these great crowds and feeding all of these people, we see that Jesus finally does get to go and spend time by himself. And it says this in Mark chapter 6, verses 45 through 46, says immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. So after a day of ministry and a day of, of carrying the burdens and the challenges of the things here on earth, Jesus said, I'm going to go spend time with God. I'm going to let God strengthen me. I'm going to remember all the promises that God has given me. And I'm going to do this so I can continue to go out and to do ministry. And so we see again in Luke chapter 6, Jesus is getting ready to call his disciples, a small group that we've been talking about. He is getting ready to call these 12 men to be his disciples. And, um, and so he, he had, he had getting ready to go do this. And, and so the night before he gets ready to do this, he goes and he spends all night praying. He's like, I've got this huge decision to make. This is going to be the group that I'm going to pour into to build my church. And I'm going to go and I'm going to spend time with in God in prayer. And so in Luke chapter 6, verses 12 and 13, it says, in, the, in these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when he came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named the apostles. And so we say this goes on time and time and time again of Jesus modeling, spending one-on-one -on -one time with God. Jesus teaches that being faithful to God, that doing ministry in our daily lives requires personal devotion to God. So if Jesus, who was perfect and holy, made this a priority in everything that he did, then we must make it a priority as well. We must be hearing from God and spending time with him in his word. And if we are going to grow in our faith and become the disciples that we have committed to becoming as Christians. And so we also see Jesus gives us a warning um, as to our personal devotion. He says this, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So Jesus is expressing the importance of your personal devotion, being fully committed to spending time with God with the purpose of growing closer to Him, not for any other agenda or to make myself look good in front of other people because He's saying you need to go and do this and spend intimate time with God alone. And God will meet you in your room or in your closet or wherever you choose. God will meet you there. And he will speak to you and he will help you to grow. And so Jesus expresses the importance of why we do this with the purpose of growing in our one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. So let me close with this. Each step of discipleship is crucial for us to reach spiritual maturity. We cannot grow to the Christians that we are called to become without having all four steps of this in place in our lives. Um, but if I had to pick the most important one, again, this is just my opinion, this is it. The, the importance of personal time with God. I mean, how much time am I spending with my Savior? Am I doing my part it, to grow in my faith and hear from God and know what He wants me personally to, to do in my life and how He personally wants me to lead my family? These are things that I need to be considering and I need to be making sure that I'm spending time with God so that I can hear from Him. See, God wants you to hear from Him because He is a relational God. He wants an intimate, close-knit relationship 
with you and he wants to speak directly to you through his word and through his spirit but we must devote the time to spend with God if we want to hear from him and so our entire faith is based on our relationship with God it's not based on a church building or a class or a people group or any of these other things it's not even based on this discipleship process it is based on our personal relationship with God and and how can I have a personal relationship with anyone if I'm not committed to spending time with them and that is the only way that I'm gonna grow in knowing who God is is if I spend personal one-on-one -on -one time with him Marriage doesn't work any other way but two people coming together, spending time with one another, growing with each other. Parenting. I cannot have a healthy relationship with my children if I don't spend time with them one-on-one -on -one and getting to know who they are and letting them know who I am and helping teaching them how to grow into be young adults. Friendship doesn't work that way. You cannot call somebody your best friend if you don't have a personal relationship with them. So to have friendship, we must have close personal relationships with other people. And so all of these are true. And so the same truth goes to our relationship with God. We can't just come to church and, and go through all the motions and look like a Christian, but not actually be growing and learning who God is on our own. God is a relational God, and if you want your relationship to grow with Him, then you must commit to spending time with Him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just thankful that you're uh, a relational God, that you chose, that you chose to have a relationship with us, that you sent your Son to die on the cross, to be resurrected from the grave, that He did all of the work so that we could have a relationship with you. A personal relationship with you and so father I pray that as we continue to grow in our understanding of what that means that we will understand the, the depth uh, and the need of our personal devotion to you of, of us spending time one-on-one -on -one with you reading your word spending time in prayer following after the model that Jesus gave us as, as we look at Jesus life the, the, the perfect Holy Son of God spent time daily with you one-on-one, -on -one, set aside time to be with you. Let us mimic that and mirror that in our lives so that we can grow more like Him, like you've called us to. So Father, I just pray that you would have your way with us. I pray that you would teach us and encourage us and inspire us through your Spirit to grow in our, in our daily walk with you and our personal devotion to you. And I pray, Lord, that we would respond to you in obedience. And as a church, Lord, I pray that we could come alongside anyone who's struggling in this area um, and just help them and help them to find the way that they, they can do this better in their lives. So, Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.